Hello. So we are back in this time. We have a nice laptop to repair with an interesting story behind of it. This is our Lenovo ThinkPad E15. Uh, let's read the customer email. So what the customer is saying, laptop is not charging, has gone flat, and the local uh, chap has taken a look at it and says that it's a failed capacitor, but can't fix it. When I send this same email, and it's a failed cap, that's easy. That's, you know, it's an easy pizza. <laughs> if you believe the story. You really believe, actually, a computer shop diagnosed the laptop with a faulty capacitor and they didn't want to fix it? This is very hard to believe. Very hard to believe. Anyway, before we are plug, actually, you know what? Let's plug the power. This is not a gaming laptop. I will say this kind of, this kind of, uh, you know, case is near to impossible. To have like a computer shop, which oh, that capacitor is shorted. Okay, I can't fix it then. No, I can't fix it. <laughs> yeah, so plug in the charger and the meter is coming on. And we have 19 volts, check there. So the PD controller it is working. Let's press the power button. Pressing the power button, nothing happened. We have fingerprint uh, power button, so this is not. A old one we have a i7 cpu i will say let's uh, open the laptop and let's have a look inside if you ask me for me it looks like that uh, you know the classic lenovo fault with failing mosfets from the motherboard that's how it looks like because the pd controller is working but it's not passing the 19 volts on the main power rail and we made so many videos about this specific fault and, you know, how easy it is to, I will not say fix it, is to dodge the, the, the fault. And the laptop, it's open. Yeah, that's a classic Lenovo motherboard. Huh? And we have, you know what, I believe the MOSFETs are not on this side of the board. But the fault, so plug in the charger. We have 19 volts on the charger, but we have nothing on the main power rail. And I can prove that. So the main power rail, we have a coil chip capacitor, and capacitor has 1.1 volts. You can see exactly what I told you. Checking on a different place, on a different power supply, we have capacitors, and here we have 1.1 volts. You see, this is a classic fault. The problem is we have to take the board out because we have to reach uh, the MOSFETs, which they are coming from the USB-C. And we have to reach the PD controller. Yeah, okay. Just, uh, you know, give me like a few minutes to take the motherboard out and we can have a look together. I mean, always, yeah, when you have a laptop with USB-C, you plug the charger and see 19 volts, that means a lot. Means the PD controller is fine. Means the EC chip is fine, because the EC chip is speaking with the PD controller. So you have two important components which are good on that motherboard. So you know most likely you can repair that one. And the motherboard is nearly out we have one more flex cable and oh lol we have the keyboard and all the stuff check that you can see some ah you can't see sorry you can see something is burned here where here here you can see a burn mark there yeah that's our mosfet so if we are checking um let me take the foil out Exactly where is that burn mark? So the burn mark is here, exactly here on the MOSFET. You can see it. Actually, the foil got stuck there. And now we have access uh, to the MOSFET. So I'm going to plug the charger and uh, let's go under the microscope. And check there the MOSFET, huh? If we are checking the voltage, let's see. So here we have a fuse and we have 5 volts. 
Yeah, okay, that's the output, sorry. So this is the input. Wait, what? Oh, no, sorry, here is the input, yeah? Here is the input. And we have 19 volt, 20 volts. Then at the output of the first MOSFET, we have 19.6, which means the MOSFET is not working. Then at the output of the second MOSFET, we have like 18, 15. Now, if you connect the battery, you it will go down to like 1 volt. So the problem is here. And the issue is the chip, which is partial uh, burn. This is a common fault with this particular PD controller. So the fault is... Uh, the 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 power supply, the pump, the yeah, charge pump, which is meant to raise the voltage to 25 volts, uh, is not working for the gates, yeah, for the gates. So here we have like 3 volts, 4 volts, and here we have like 1 volt, 0 volts. So it's not right. Okay, what is surprising here, I can see some rise voltage. So let me unplug the charger. So this MOSFET is still good, and this one is still good. With the gate, good. With the gate, good. So the MOSFETs are not shorted. But I want to check something, yeah? So from the ground here, we have 19 point. 21 you see it's, it's jumping to 21 sometimes so this is not like completely dead so the input voltage is 19.8 you can see but on the gate we have 19.3 but we seen it's going to 21 so i'm going to short the first mosfet to see what happened so shorting the first mosfet and no it's no it's not working no no it's dead and yeah, yeah. So the solution for this repair, what is the solution? This is a happy case, yeah? So the happy case, you have only one port, so you don't have to take some important decision. If you have two ports, then you cannot really do, you can dodge the repairs, but the voltage can come out on the other port. But here we have only one port. I'm assuming we have only one port. On the other side of the laptop, no, we don't have, no, it's only one port. So we are gonna dodge the fault. Dodge, I mean, going around, yeah? It's no point, I mean, it's no point. You can replace this one. You can replace this one and you can replace the MOSFETs. But you cannot be sure actually they are working on the warranty time, like three months. So I prefer removing the MOSFETs, that's what I prefer. So we remove the MOSFETs, and now we are using proper calibrated solder wire from here to here, and from here To here so something like that let's be sure perfect we don't need wires because we have a fuse there yeah so if we are plugging the charger now what will happen Plug in the charger now. The board started. Check that it's taking like 900 milliamps. Uh, for some, it looks like a dodgy repair. For me, it's an improvement. We get rid of the MOSFETs, so we have no current loss across. We don't have MOSFETs anymore. Here, it will be no current loss. It will be cold, no heat. Now, if you know about the motherboards, and you will ask yourself, uh, okay, sorry, but what about if I plug a USB-C device? The MOSFETs have nothing to do with the power output, uh, which, which the charging port it will output. So, actually, you have a power supply, which is creating, yeah, you have a back-and-bus power supply. 
not sure where. Should be a power supply with four MOSFETs. I'm assuming it's this one. Yeah, it can be this one. This can be a dual MOSFET, but let's check to be sure. Yeah, that's the one. You can see this is a dual MOSFET. Then we have one MOSFET here and one MOSFET there. Or no. Is this MOSFET that is a dual MOSFET and this one is a dual MOSFET? I can see a gate here and a gate here. Yeah. Then we have the comeback MOSFET from the battery. We have a fuse on the battery. Yeah. So it's nothing to worry about. The next logical question, it will be, okay, sorry, but why the manufacturer feed the MOSFETs on the first place? And that's a very good question. Well, you can't have, like, you know, 2025 protection like fuse. Like, the fuse, it'll burn once, and that's all. So anything happen, like overcurrent or um, short circuit, let's say at the output, you plug a USB-C device with short circuit. Uh, the fuse is the ultimate protection. So on the first place, the current is going up and the PD controller, it will cut the current down using the MOSFETs, which they are not here. So the downside, uh, if something wrong happened, like plugging a shorted USB-C device, uh, the fuse, it will, it will get burned. But if you ask me, it's a, you know, it's kind of like a, it's, it's worth it. I mean, not only we fix uh, the motherboard, but actually we improve it a little bit. Remember I told you before, the more complicated design, the higher chance something to go wrong, like on this case. So keeping the thing simple, um, it's... The laptop doesn't have to be like that. I explained so many times, doesn't have to have a PD controller. I don't, I don't understand how we, 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 we came to like having a chip with a firmware and stuff like that. I have my car, I swear. Yeah, this is a new car. And it's not new, I like three, three years old. I'm having a key to disconnect the battery in the, in the boot. Because it has so many digital errors and so many ten times I have like different kind of stuff. And I call them so many times, and they, they are just coming here, resetting, you know, disconnecting the battery, connecting the battery back, and that's all. So from some reason, which I don't understand, I swear I don't understand, we are moving forward, creating, like, worse things, like poor design. Even if it looks like an improvement, you have a lot of stuff, you know, like in the car, you have a lot of, like, lights and all kind of stuff, but the car is... The car is performing poorer compared with like 10, 15 years old car. I mean, this is insane to have like a three years old car than, you know, having a key with you to disconnect the battery. Same with the laptops. Yeah. <laughs> we start from having everything repla replaceable. You remember, we have the CPU on the socket. We have a battery. You can replace it. Now we have nothing. And more than that, we can't even repair the, the you know, the PD controller. PD controller is burned. I think this one is replaceable, but you have a bunch, 90, probably 99% of the PD controllers, they have to be programmed, which we can't do it. Why we can't do it? Because the manufacturers, they are not sharing uh, the firmware or how to program that chip. Yeah. So somehow it looks like it's a progress. Yeah, like in everything it's a progress, but actually, from my point of view, it's not a progress. I think the progress ends somewhere uh, around uh, 2000 up to 2005. I believe there the progress stopped. Okay, everything is back in place. Let's plug the battery. Let's plug the charger. And the charger is plugged in. We have the charging light, check that. Huh? And we have 1.1 amp, 2 3 amps. 3 amps, check that, 3 amps. So probably the laptop is on. Yeah, it is on. You can see the light on the power button. Yeah. Let's wait because we reset the BIOS. Uh, 3 amps, yeah, that's 60 watts. And we have picture, huh? What do you think about that? Hmm? We fix it. Uh, escape to continue. 
and is loading the windows. The current here, 3 amps, 60 watts, so it looks like it's a constant uh, current. So even if the laptop is on or off, there are only 60 watts. So basically shutting down the laptop, it will charge faster. And everything is fine, charging fine. Let me shut down the laptop. And the laptop is off and is taking exactly 3 amps. So one more time, I really doubt regarding the customer email. I really doubt like any computer shop, it will send away a job with a capacitor. So uh, probably they, they didn't check or they tried to comfort the customer. Like, okay, you know, it must be something simple. So I'm going to stop now. I will say uh, thank you for watching, you know, like, subscribe if you like the video. And see you on the next one. Bye. Hey. If you find my content being helpful, don't forget you can support this channel by pressing the join button and you can get instantly access to our members only cool collection and uh, Discord private channels for support with your repairs. Also, you can have a look on our uh, United Kingdom uh, eBay where you can find some cool and unique products, United States eBay store or our Patreon page. Thank you.